AJ. MP. What's going on, dude? Staying hungry. How about you? Staying hungry, man. Dude, welcome back to your, our awesome podcast that we have here. It's fucking thanks epic. For, thanks for having me. Dude, thanks for thanks for being here, dude. <laughs> we have an awesome topic for you guys. But first, MP is going to backtrack a little bit and fill you in on last week's episode. Yes. Yeah, so, guys, if you if you didn't listen to last week's episode, we did uh, an awesome episode talking about fruit. We got into uh, some of the benefits, not all the benefits, but some of the benefits of eating uh, a lot of fruit or even a fruit-based diet. And we talked mainly about a lot of challenges that one might see while eating a lot of fruit. And it's just funny because I told AJ, I'm like, dude, I, there's like so much more that like I, I didn't say on the episode that like we kept talking about after and after, you know, um, but it just goes to show that there really is like so much to dive into and talk about with this with this kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. If you guys did listen to that one, go check it out. We're, we're really into, you know, eating, eating clean, healthy food. And uh, fruit is definitely one of those foods that uh, we both are into eating meat more myself, more than AJ. Uh, but yeah, anyways, so if you, if you want an honest, you know, heartfelt look at someone, people who have had experience doing so and can look at it objectively and not just from a mindset of mm-hmm. <clears throat> trying to live in a way of perfectionism and stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. I think you guys will enjoy it. I think it could enlighten you to the point of you not staying in your rigid routines um, of what's clearly not working or some new things to possibly try. Totally. hundred <clears throat> um, percent. Keep it 100. <laughs> hey, you got to keep it 100. I... <laughs> AJ, what do you, uh, what's uh, today's going to be? What, what's today's topic about? Let's, let's, uh, let's, let, let's get in. Hmm. Let's get into it. Well, today's topic is sponsored by the Woodstock Fruit Festival. Ew. So, if anyone's listening and you're thinking about going to Woodstock, if it's your first year, use code hungry people and you'll save a hundred bucks and you support the podcast. It really helps us out because we're trying to grow. We're trying to get more people to come to this fit and health event. You guys, we're going to be there. We're going to hang out. We're going to have a good time. We're going to eat food. We're going to exercise. Let's hang out. Let's see you this August at the Woodstock fruit festival. Use code hungry people back to the show. Yes, sir. Let's get it. So, AJ, do you want to tell us what we're talking about today? (laughs) Yeah, we're going to get into dating, you know, especially in 2022 with the pandemic and, you know, being vegan, kind of the pitfalls and the challenges. Also, what you have is an advantage going into this second half of the year. Right. I love it. Um, Where do you want to start? I mean, like, do, do you think it's like for yourself? Do you think it's it's enjoyable? dating in 2022 as you take a shot of supercells you want to give me a shot (laughs) uh do you think it's enjoyable to date as a vegan in 2022 let's start right there um it's actually really really easy i i stand on the belief that the more unique you are in a lot of instances it can kind of separate you from the herd so that you come across as a little more interesting Obviously, fucking 99% of people aren't vegan, and there's usually a negative, you know, stigma right. to it. But at the same time, the people who are, you're going to stand out to those individuals who are also kind of more isolated and don't have as much community. They're not into all the drinking and the drugs and the, you know, 50 fucking partner. Well, actually, all the hippies are into having lots of partners. <laughs> but um, it kind of it gives you a little bit of something to work with, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And, and I think even just as a vegan right now, I mean, the options just keep growing and growing and growing, you know, I mean, even in Pittsburgh here, there's, it's actually funny. I say that now because two vegan restaurants did just close. Um, but like there's, but, but other, other, uh, restaurants are having more vegan options available and they're also labeling, uh, the options as, as vegan. Cause sometimes like you go to a restaurant and, um, it'll say like vegetarian, but you don't really necessarily know if it's vegan or not. But Pittsburgh has some great options, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we definitely we definitely do have some solid options here. Um Onion Maiden, Apteca. I mean, I mean, here's the thing. I was in Poland seven years ago or fucking yeah. eight years ago. There were so many vegan restaurants. Like, dude, oh, we're wow. in the US, you know, there's tons of options. Yeah, no, and it's we're it's speaking def- the same language. You might have right. to just change up a thing here and there, but it's easy. It's right. so easy. It's definitely growing and <laughs> For the most part, at, at most restaurants, you can find something to eat 
as a vegan, even if it is like a salad, <laughs> throw some fries on there, I guess, if you want to. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, um, it, it's also, it, it's also tough too, because like AJ and I were extremely health conscious people and we want to be eating like two we're too damn health conscious <laughs> we're hyper conscientious with this shit right right um so like like eating something like french fries it's not ideal but like i feel at that moment in time it's like it's, it's healthy in that moment in time you know so like we i feel like it's it's just like a common fact that like eat, probably any fried food isn't necessarily the best for you but uh in some circumstances it can be it can be seen as quote unquote healthy to to maybe get you through the evening yeah you know I, let me share an experience so i went to a restaurant with a bunch of friends and none of them were vegan and there really actually was no vegan options on the menu <laughs> and i didn't eat anything and in my head even though a french fry and burger i mean a burger and french fries aren't necessarily the healthiest option it almost felt healthier to actually get something right so it wasn't like i was doing out of health because i was missing out on a meal i was isolated i was like yeah you just don't have that feeling Right. Even if you got like a juice or some fucking a salad, it's not it's not the same. You're yeah. you're left out. Yeah, and that's not a good feeling. No, and especially if you're hungry, and especially if everywhere's going to be closed afterwards. And mm-hmm. that's the big problem, not just with dating, but with uh, the challenges that make it a little harder with the veganism. It's just more inconvenient. It's really easy, but it mm-hmm. definitely isn't as convenient as eating whatever. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, it's uh, it's it's funny because um, when Leo was in Pittsburgh here and him and I would go out to eat and stuff with his daughter and if we had friends along too, it, it, we would always because like he he's pretty for the most or he was at least uh, pretty health conscious, um, and even he would say like MP like what we're doing is extremely healthy right now like you and me and my daughter and whoever are going out to eat it's extremely healthy going and sharing meals and entertainment with other people. It is now the the food that, yeah, for sure. And the food that we're eating may not necessarily be quote unquote healthy, but it is like what we're doing is, is overall healthy and enjoyable. And uh, even, even for dating, I think that's something that we have to be wary about and understand, you know, like it's, it's okay to go out and, and, and have a meal and enjoy a meal that you may not think is as healthy as you want it to be, but you're doing your best. So, um, well, MP, I wanted to dive into something. If you feel comfortable kind of sharing, because you and I are both in the dating world right now. So yeah. it's extremely, this topic's extremely relevant yeah. to our yeah. lives. So yeah. I would love for you to kind of share what you're looking for. In a party. Yeah, um, so all the ladies out there can get an idea of like <laughs> how they should have their hair or how they should approach you. Or something like so that. what am I looking for? Like, what am I looking for in like a female or what am I looking for? Like in a relationship? Well, this or... isn't like build a character like a yeah. video game. <laughs> right. Like right. Green eyes with red hair and fucking <laughs> legs that are two foot five, whatever. No, right. it's more like some things that you really enjoy about a person. Yeah. And it can include the looks and stuff like that. So, yeah, totally. Or maybe the habits, the people they're around. Like, what, right. what do you enjoy? What do you want? Yeah, well, I, I, I love, I love laughter. I love like good conversation. I love someone who's like really, even if they're not like quote unquote into the person, but like they really want to at least get to know the person. You know, when we're having conversation, it's not like there's a dull moment where we're just like sitting there have like having no no questions asked. You know, I want someone that that at least seems like they're into me and who wants to get to know me. Uh, I really, I definitely am looking for an independent woman, someone who, you know, wants to take it on herself and uh, really push through life and does what she has to do to get through I'm sorry? Like a UFC fighter? Yeah. I mean, hey, if if, if that's, if, hey, if she's nice, you know, some UFC fighters, I can imagine that uh, they're, they're kind of hard nosed, you know, but I'm sure, I'm sure when they're outside the ring, they're extremely generous people. Yeah. You can only hope because their, their hands are weapons. Their hands are weapons. So uh, I feel like they, they have to be generous. You know, they can't be getting into fights outside of the ring. <laughs> you think um, you could take a UFC female that you have maybe like 50 pounds on? Um, if you had to defend yourself, do you think you'd have a problem? 
see the thing with me is like i'm not a fighter at all like i'm just a lover i'm a hugger lover hugger uh <laughs> like i've i haven't been in a fight before i've gotten punched in the face actually oh, i got shit. punched when i was in like second or third grade or something <laughs> What is that? but that was like that was really it um i mean i've been in like in the middle of like some altercations with some people like breaking it up and stuff but um and like and i've obviously like i've wrestled people before like my friends and <laughs> you, you know how that goes when you're younger and stuff um oh, of course yeah I, but i was um, mainly joking I don't, I don't i'm not trying to encourage like you no yeah like i i, I dude, you're I, a big strong dude just say yes. I, I, would, I would give her a good fight you know i'd give her a good fight <laughs> just pick her up and slam her maybe <laughs> that's all i could probably all right, do okay. Okay, what, um, what else are you looking for yeah so what else um i i love uh someone who has like nice teeth and a beautiful smile um it's, it's funny because I, i've always been like more of a brunette brunette guy but i feel like i've always dated uh blondes <laughs> for some reason <laughs> um or talk to blondes um for some reason i i feel like i want someone who's a little bit younger than i am uh i don't know i just feel like they're more like bubbly and i'm not i'm, I'm 27 i'm not saying like 17 i'm saying like <laughs> like uh, 23 24 even 20 whatever it doesn't matter but if i met someone who was older and it worked out great cool um but i, I just feel like they, they still have like that youth and then that that the the yeah they still the, have passion and they have energy yeah it, it's not like it's not like someone older than me doesn't have that but it's it's like I generally can, they'll have less. You know? Yeah, for sure. But it's like some it's I feel like it's someone who I can like live vicariously through, you know, like they're live through their youth. Cause like I just want to I I know AJ, we're getting older, we're getting older, but I, I want to like stay as young we're as so possible. <laughs> fucking so old. Um but yeah, I definitely over 21 at least. <laughs> like let's All let's right, so, so, let's so you go straight. on a you go on a first date. Yeah, how do you want it to go? Like, what do you want to happen? Yeah, I mean, on a first date, I think like going out to a nice restaurant and just grabbing a meal was is awesome. Would be do you super treat. Do you treat for the meal? Of, of course, I treat for the meal. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Um, but like, I'm also open to uh, even if it is just like going on a walk and maybe grabbing a snack or, um, I, I, I like it, it's funny because like most people who wanna who uh, are dating and who I see, like all they want to do is like. Hey, you want to grab drinks? You want to grab drinks? You want to grab drinks? You know, you want to like, it's alcoholic drinks. That's like, that's like what they do. That's what they say. And for me, I'm always like, yeah, like I know there's grab food, if anything, you know, like instead of grabbing drinks, let's just grab dinner or something or, <laughs> or we can go on a walk or, um, get ice cream, you know? And, and that's another thing too, with the ice cream part is that, is that like, you just got to hope there's vegan options at the ice cream place, ice cream parlor. And usually there is vegan options, which is awesome. Thank you. So, um, yeah, it, I like going to like, it'd be, it'd be fun too to like go to a park and even like set up, a you know, like a, a blanket and bring some food and, and have some nice time in the park. It's tough to do that in the winter though, you know? So, and so it's funny you, for, go ahead. I, I was going to say like, even for me, like I, I haven't had a coffee since 2019, early 2019, late 2018, early 2019. So even like going to get like coffee, like I, I like I'd have to get tea, you know. So like we can say, hey, let's get coffee or tea. Like, hey, you want to get grass on coffee or tea? And then I would probably get tea, you know. So I feel like that's also something else that we could do, you know. So right. I mean, there's plenty of options. You can go fucking take her to the park and give her a workout, <laughs> like a like a push up workout, not like a. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> yeah. So. Um... <laughs> but, you. are you are you making the first move if you go in for a kiss or something or hold uh, your hand or or do you wait and let them do it i usually i, I usually get a feel for it because i don't want to get like turned down and be like the like be weirded out or make it awkward so like it, it's like in the moment if we're both feeling it i'll know you know and then we'll both just we'll both make the make the move you know what i'm saying so but i don't like to be like be overly aggressive person even though some people may like that some girls may like that you know so but AJ, i want to turn it back on you now and ask what you see in a girl because i feel like you uh, 
can get extremely descriptive and you really know what you're looking for. And I, I mean, I, for the most part, I, I know what I'm looking for too, but um, yeah, I want to hear some stuff. All right, ladies, get out your pen and paper. <laughs> Be sure to and, write this down. And guys, no. <laughs> don't forget. No, well, guys, um, so they can learn. It's, it's the guys too, so they can learn at least. Oh, like uh, the advice advice for guys? You mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, if I break it, if I break, I can break it down and make it really, really complex. The simple version is I want someone pretty sweet and loyal. Those are like my foundational pillars because you can have a fucking smoking 10. Right. And she is like the most annoying, most disagreeable. Right. And can't being around her person. Or you could have someone who's sweet, who's fr- friggin' beautiful. But they're not loyal. They cheat on right. It's like, it's craziness, you know, out there. Or, you know, you have, uh, you, know, you have, the sweetness and the loyalness, but you're not attracted to the person. So that's kind of my foundational three. Um, You know this and, and you're going through the same stage too. Since I moved to Chattanooga, honestly, I'll go into the whole foods and I'll see more pretty women at the whole foods than I would a month up North where I was. And I think it's just because it's like a younger twenties, thirties kind of city. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of like great restaurants. There's a lot, a lot of sports events and athletic stuff to do. It's just a lot of fit. There's a college town. So a lot of fit people. Right. And it's, you're just exposed to more opportunity for someone that you would be interested in. If you're looking for what I'm looking for, which is someone who's generally into They're generally into taking care of themselves mm-hmm. in a way that isn't detrimental. So I don't need someone who's like, I'm vegan and I go to bed at 830 and <laughs> I take my oxygen. I, take more bed, and if I drink a cup of coffee. I make sure I have my hydrogen. <laughs> like, like, I don't need that. But I but I don't want people who are like getting smashed every night and yeah, right. smoke weed every night to help yeah. them calm down. And mm-hmm. you know, that's that just wears you out in a relationship mm-hmm. for sure. Right. So like to give you an idea, I think we find what we like through experience. 100%. I've gone to. on like 10 dates in the last three weeks. And there was one woman that I told you about, MP. Uh, she was like a nursing director for Chattanooga. And we went to this place, Cashew. We had some amazing food and a great conversation. And it, it, was, it went so well, in my view. Yeah. That I was just like, wow, I didn't even realize I wanted this until I had it. Right. And what it was, was someone who was so mentally healthy. Like this person wasn't, you know, depressed and like having to do all these things. Like this lady was just all there, like mm-hmm. fully aware, fully conscious, kind of had a game plan, had a great career, just knew what she wanted. And it's not like every single thing of every single one of those is essential for like me to find someone interesting, but it was like humbling. I was like, it made me want to be a better man. And I know like women out there, they want someone like, I'm sure a lot of women want a man who kind of is driven and knows what they want and all these things. Right. But it, but it's kind of like compliments, you know, it can complement each other because when one person's brought up, the other kind of gets brought up with them. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking to have a good time. I know a lot of people say, Hey, fighting's healthy in a relationship. I'm not saying that sometimes that isn't true, but I don't want to fight. No. Yeah. I was in a relationship for years and we never fought. Perfect. And and it was just because that's how we clicked. Like we didn't need to fight. We just either addressed it or maybe we got upset, but we didn't fight. Right. I wanted to, I I wanted to ask you something about like the loyal, uh, the loyal part. It's funny because I actually was on a date last night and the, the female and I, we were talking about, um, you're talking about like trust and, uh, she, it was something like she was in a meeting or something there some training and um they talked about how the ba- like in the baby boomer era and baby boomer era baby boomer era <laughs> quantity um that it was always we don't trust you until you prove to us that that we can trust you you know but now in like gen z it's more um it's more Oh, we will trust you until you give us a reason not to trust you, you know? So how do you feel, uh, yourself in regards to a female? Like, are you just right away going to trust her or are you going to be like, I got like, she has to do something to make me jump through my hoops, (laughs) get my approval. Yeah. Uh, 
for those of you who, who know Dr. Doug Lyle, I'm a huge fan and his podcast is actually my favorite podcast. Don't tell MP, but, um, beat your genes. It's evolutionary psychology. It's all about this kind of stuff. So if you're interested in this, check it out. But he talks about after you check us out, he talks about the mechanisms that we were built with to pick up on these subtle issues Uh when it comes to trust. And there's always the signals there. There's always the way someone's acting. You know, when I was in MP, you tell me when you were in a relationship and it was going fucking amazing. Did you have any doubt at all that like, Exactly. And it's no. when we start to have these problems. It's when they start to pull away. It's mm-hmm. when they start to learn looking at their phone and they're kind of like this. Like you can you can easily pick up on these things if you're even somewhat aware. Right. So I think that if you're not ignoring those things, you can pick up on it. Um, mm-hmm. And that's the thing. Like when I've experienced real love, the other people don't exist. Yeah, right. You're just you're so zoned in. Right. And I I mean, I'm going to say some things that are controversial in this, maybe not really, but like there's a lot of stuff that's accepted that I think shouldn't be accepted. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of people taking too much slack in a relationship and putting up with too much. And I don't think it's healthy for the other person. Like, do you think so you're saying that you think that someone should be like laying the hammer down more or like one person's laying the hammer down the other one's just like taking it and accepting it. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah. So I think that both parties but especially if you're a male i mean i think males generally lead and i want i will lead my relationships yeah you kind of tell them what you're looking for and what you're not going to compromise on so for me if i have a female and it's serious and i'm really into her but every weekend you know her idea is to is to hang out with guy friends and get drunk i'm like well that's not okay with me yeah i can hear females out there thinking oh, that's controlling or whatever. It's like, hey, no, that's my preference. I don't like when my female, which is physically more susceptible to danger, yeah. is around drunk dudes that are making bad decisions. <laughs> right. And if she thinks that I, like, I would be the bad guy in that situation, it, it's clearly not going to be for me. That relationship. Yeah, right. Well, what about someone who uh, maybe has had a, a friend that, that was a guy and they've been just best friends for a really long time? And, you know, I feel like it's tough to be like, hey, well, did you ever like get with this guy or are you guys just like friends? Like, like, what's the deal here? You know, like, you, I feel like you don't want to like get too into it because uh, like you want to respect her space. But it's also like, you know, this is your girl. You don't want her hanging out with some dude who she used to be having sex with. It's kind of, you know, um, yeah. like, how do you how would you feel about something like that? Okay. If we bring it back to what I said a little earlier, if you're, if she's really in love with you or you're really in love with her, other people just start to fade out. Like you'll be introduced to them. Maybe you'll see them at a party or you're hanging out with them at a family gathering or whatever. But like, if she, like I said, if she's like sleeping over there and just like, Hey, we're just friends. Like we're watching a movie tonight. It's like, Oh, sorry. Fuck you. Yeah. Right. (laughs) Like that's too much. Right. And I feel like people now they're so worried because of cancel culture and they're so worried that being controlling when it's like, no, just have standards. Like, Hey, you do that. You have a great time. You know, I'm, I'm going there and I'm doing this. Yeah, exactly. This is what I want. These are, these are the things I'm looking for. Yeah. Cool. Because what's more important than being able to trust someone? What's more important than family and creating love? Not much. Is it worth hanging out with this person? You don't give that much of a fuck about doing things that you're putting your relationship at risk. It doesn't make sense. Right. Especially for someone he like truly deeply love and care about. It's not, they're not worth losing. Um, right. And, and I don't know if this is true. I did hear this. So like, you know how uh, people will say, oh no, he's my gay friend. <laughs> yeah. So this is from Dr. Doug Lyle on Beat Your Jeans. It was like uh, 30% of friends who impregnated females, they were from gay guys because they still enjoy sex. So like, it's not like the possibility isn't there. Right. Wow interesting so yeah it's could potentially happen or maybe it did happen right it's interesting um okay so aj uh now uh, what is your preferred way of okay so what is your preferred way of meeting a girl versus like what Mm -hmm. versus like what you do do to meet a girl okay so preferred is always repeat exposure through group things so like if you belong to a church you belong to a running club you belong to a job well don't date your co-workers i've done this <laughs> it doesn't work but um you know these repeat exposures where people get to become comfortable with each other and you get really get 
a less ver- like a less pressured version mm-hmm. of socializing like right. that's a great thing you know so like back in the day when we had these things that we had to go and do like go to school or go to fucking baseball or whatever right uh, yeah it's good because then we have that opportunity and then as we graduate as we start to work on our own live on our own we mm-hmm. start to isolate more and more and isolation is the dream killer not your bad attitude you need to be exposed to things you need to be exposed to people and that's why i moved to chattanooga because i knew i love the restaurants the people are awesome they're attractive there's money to be made down here. There's a great fitness. I love the mountains. I love the waterfalls and all this stuff. And every time I go out, it's just an opportunity. Like I was at the mall to give you guys an example. I was at the mall a few weeks ago and there was a woman there and we just got to talking and then I was looking for pants. So I was like, Oh, do you know where uh, Dillard's is? And she was like, yeah, it's actually, if you go here and turn right, I'm like, I'm new to the area. Would you mind showing me where it is? So she shows me, get to talk more. And, okay, then AJ. I, and then I was like, do you have any recommend uh, recommendations for restaurants? Like I'm looking to try some awesome food. And she said, my favorite place is this. And then I said, oh, did you want to go with me? So I got her number. So like, that's what I'm saying. Like if you get exposed to people, you just have more opportunities. Okay, AJ, you're laying it down, dude. I love it. You're a fucking savage. So my, my favorite <laughs> would be the less pressured version where we get to see each other. But if you're really into someone, it's kind of like, right. All right you got to make it happen if you, if you want a chance. Right. No, I love that. I love that. Um, but you know how you can't even, you can't always tell though. So last night I was at a restaurant with my brothers down and there was this woman, she kept walking by, right? Really cute, blonde with his hat on. And she keeps making eye contact, but holding the gaze. Now, for those of you listening, Holding the gaze is a sign that someone is like somewhat interested in. Yeah, you can tell. Yeah. And especially this is a species specific signal from females. If they hold your gaze, they look away then they look back and hold your gaze again. That is a sign that they're into you. Now, it's just a signal. It's not like you can fucking do whatever you want. Obviously, (laughs) use some common sense here. But it's but it's a good sign. It's like, oh, cool. If you talk to her and feel right, feels right. Maybe it'll something can happen anyway. Mm -hmm. um, What was I working? Oh, the female. So she walked by like six times. And on the sixth time, she really held my eyes. And then my my, you know, brother was like, damn, dude, you need to like get her number. So our waitress came back and and the lady was busy. So I was like, it was taking a while. So I was like, hey, could you tell me something? (laughs) Do you know if she's single? Because she's making eye contact and smiling at me. And I was I was going to ask her out, but I want to know if she was single. And then the waitress goes, actually, she's getting married tomorrow. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Oh, so my like, God. Sometimes you can't tell. Right. Yeah, sure. exactly. And that's and that's what's so tough. Like even being at the gym and whatnot uh, or anywhere out about like you have no clue. Like I'll see girls at the gym. And I'm just like, I don't ever want to say anything because you just like their boyfriend will come up to them in like two minutes, you know, or in, in the middle of a set, they'll come up. And it's just like, I it just, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I don't want to like get in the way, you know, right. now there, there, there are some women who are like, there's a, there's a clear sign that they are single and in, and even still like sometimes maybe you'll even see them walk into the gym alone, you know, see so like, you know, like, Oh, okay. Well they're, they're single. Um, and it's funny cause my neighbor, he actually, he used to be like a big gym rat and, um, he actually told me about like a good way to like go to a girl in the gym to like not make it awkward. And oh. basically, <laughs> and basically what he said was like, if she's using like, uh, maybe one of the, one of the bars or one of the ropes or something or whatnot, or she's just over by like a machine where you're going to go be like, Hey, are you, are you using this machine? She's like, you know, well, no, no. And they're like, oh, cool. Um, by the way, like, I see you around at the gym, like, just going inter- to introduce myself. My name's MP, like, nice to meet you. You know, and she's like, oh, hey, my name's Alyssa. I just, that's just a random name. Um, hey, Alyssa. Yeah. And then, like, maybe you can just you have some conversation, you know, or even be like, hey, like, you hitting legs today at the gym? Like, you're freaking crushing it, you know, or hey, like, what kind of, you just, like, you're doing a back workout? Like, looks like you're doing great. Like, any, any tips on like some exercises or, like you know i don't know just has, like has it worked has it have you done it i have not tried it once yeah, I, I have one that's gym. the thing i'm just like yeah i haven't like i just I have honestly, one, gym, one gym time what 
I have one since I moved here. I went to the gym once. Yeah. And I wasn't on purpose. I walk up to the desk, right? And I don't even see the person. I just, I'm like, I can't find this machine. It was like the pull down flat machine. Yeah. So it happens to be, I had the person I asked, she's gorgeous. And she comes out and she's showing me and that's where it is. And then we get to talking. And then she says, I said, I bring up Southern Squeeze. It's this awesome restaurant here. And I said, oh, have you ever, because she started recommending places. I said, have you ever eaten Southern Squeeze? And she goes, actually i've been wanting to try it for so long I'm like why don't we go tomorrow like that seems so natural and easy and yeah right pressure and like um i think hitting on women when they're clearly uncomfortable is a bad thing to do yeah for sure like let them work out you know obviously be be yeah, respectful. right 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 but if you, you can get a conversation going and you ask i mean that's right shooting your shot nice yeah I, I feel like i need more more uh interactions like that um, but did you end up going on that date with that girl? Like she guys... actually stood me up. No, she... Really? Yeah. Well, she ghosted me. Yeah. Just didn't respond. Yeah. But the good you know, news it's, is, it, I was just saying, like, it's it's tough for a female though because, like, in in that moment in time, they're gonna be agreeable. I feel like and they're gonna they're gonna say, oh yeah, sure, like that sounds awesome, you know. Right. But then, like, if they get some time to like think about it, they're like, uh, you know what? I really may not want to do that, or let's go a different time. Oh, he's it, vegan. <laughs> yeah um I, I feel like there's definitely more to it than we think um yeah well so, since i've been doing the car sales i've kind of used some similar uh communication to secure or enhance these dates and i feel as though one of the things i've learned is called the law of averages have you heard of this uh, i i think i have yeah it's basically like yeah, I've, I've heard it. How many, you know, let's, let's say you want to meet a vegan person just in general, not even a girl, just a person. Yeah. The more people you go up to, the more chances is going to, you're going to meet someone. Yeah. Right. The one person is probably pretty low chance. Right. So right. that's kind of where I'm at right now, where it's like, if I go on a, a 200 dates by the end of the year, I'm sure there's going to be fucking two where I'm like, this is yeah, awesome. right. Like, holy, right. Like it was worth all the dinners. And like, right. <laughs> I mean, I had a psycho last Wednesday. I went on a date with the psychopath. I'm pretty sure she was. No way. She sat there the entire conversation. And no, it's not just because she's shy. Don't defend her. She was weird. She's sitting like this, talking to me. And then she would just look at me like this. When she was what? Like, and then I would just be trying to create conversation. Like, yeah, right. Here. You're just you're then, feeling uncomfortable. And then she, would, she said, Do you, are you trying to groom me? like grooming women which is like isolating them and then controlling them it's like a, it's like a vile like a horrible thing to do what but she just says that within the first three minutes of talking to her and she keeps saying weird things like uh oh you want the southern squeeze that's not a place to get your d wet and then at the end what? of the day i say people are weird dude i said oh did you want me to walk you to your car because she walked you know she had like a five minute walk she said no i think i'm gonna stay and then she goes, but could I see your driver's license? And I was like, what? Uh, why? I've and never heard said, a girl ask that. <laughs> she said, I want to see what your last name is and where you live. And I said, check, please. Dude, that is a, that's a weird person. She was weird as hell. Was she, and was she, she and then in the middle, she told me she has four lovers right now. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> What's going what? on? Yeah. Do you let me ask you this? Do you always say for the girl, no matter what? Always, even this one. Yeah, you, ha- you got to, right? You have to. You can't let them. Well, well, you know what's funny? Good, good. Well, I wanted to say there's before if you want to say it first so you don't forget. No, I, I don't remember. Okay, so there's a strategy for males with dating, and there's a strategy for females. Okay, so I all, I'm all about the intention of dating and then taking it further in terms of cr- the potential relationship. So for me, it's usually not like a one and done, you know, Oh, I slept with them. I'm, I'm going this way. It's more about like potential relationships. So if you go on the third one, the fourth one, you're wanting to work something out. And if it's not working, then you end it kind of thing. Yeah. So for a, for a male, what you want to do is get the second date. The goal of the first date is to get the second one because over time, females tend to become more comfortable with you and give you more of an opportunity to see who you are and, and all the great things that you can do for them. But naturally they're going to have more defense in the beginning because they're hit on all the time. They've met tons of shit has, you know, shitheads and all this stuff. 
So the goal is not to kiss them on the first date, to sleep with them, to fucking, you know, get anything from them. It's more right. just like have a great time and get to see them again. And over time, she will become more invested if she's interested. Right. Now, <clears throat> it's the opposite for women. Guys become less interested over time, not more. It's more mm -hmm. exciting in the beginning for a guy, and then it kind of fizzles out. Not for everyone, but this is like general speak. So the goal of the woman on the date is to get the guy to pay and to go on enough dates without sleeping with him to see if he's actually interested in you, unless you're just looking for a hookup. Right. So if you're like, I sleep with a guy right after the second date all the time. And I've been paying for like, he doesn't value you because he doesn't have to, like, the, it's not that he has to pay, but what he's doing is he's showing he's going to be patient. He's going to put his money. He likes you. He's into you. He's going to take his time and he's going to get, take care of you. But if, if you just, um, and if you, if you wait until date 10 or something like that, it gives it enough time to weed out the people who are just trying to use you, basically. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, it's like if you, if you get to that, the 10th day, you can only hope that like you both sort of like each other, or you enjoy each other's company, right. and it's nice. What will happen is a lot of the flakes by six or seven will be like, oh, she's not going to do it. I wasn't that interested anyway. Yeah. And then the girl, you know... Cause, cause like a female is going to get more in, like connected and intimate if that happens and then be more hurt and let down if it doesn't work out. But like, isn't that a lot of dates to like be let down for? Like, I don't know. I feel like, um, like even with me, I, like right away, I'm like, like what, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you dating? You know, like, why are you like, I'll use it. I use a dating app. Like, why are you on here? You know, like, what's the point? You know, you're just trying to like, you, you do like want to find a partner. Do you, um, want to have fun? Do you like just want to hook up? Like, like, what are you on here for? You know, because I, I, I like right away. That's like, I guess I get straight to the point. You know, mm -hmm. I'm sure I know some people. They they they're really smart, intelligent, and they can act funny and stuff. But hmm. <laughs> I mean, I do that too sometimes. But like, I like to like get to the point. You know, because like you'll have conversation and it'll just get nowhere. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So like for a girl. And then AJ, I know you mentioned to me, like, you don't want to like give everything you up. Like you don't want to like talk with yourself too much in the first date. Right. Like you want her to like right. knowing. So you want That's the girl to like get you to know or to, like have some like in, in the back of her mind for the next date. Right. Yeah. So keep in mind when I'm saying this, I'm quoting more Dr. Lyle, the evolutionary psychologist. Um, I forgot to make that point. Good, good catch MP. So on a first date, <laughs> A good way to get that second date is to not get ruled out. How do you get ruled out? Well, it's a great idea on the first date to ask the female a lot of questions. So you get to learn about her, right? It shows that you're patient and respectful. But also, if she knows too much about you, there might be some small insignificant thing that isn't important mm -hmm. that she uses in her Stone Age brain to rule you out. For yeah. example, you love the winner. You love uh, having the the air super cold in the summer. And then she hears that and thinks I can never live with someone who has to have it cold all the time. Yeah. Right. Even though she there likes you, you, she rules you out because she hasn't become comfortable with you. She haven't, you know, she hasn't been fully invested yet. Mm -hmm. And a female, like I said, she's being more defensive in the beginning and trying to rule out potential partners. Mm -hmm. Whereas a guy is trying to find every excuse possible. Like maybe if I drink, she'll look better. Yeah. Or right. <laughs> and then it's flipped later. So, right. That's why the whole the goal of the first one is to get the second one. And by right. doing that, you know, on that date I had with that nurse, it went really well. Well, it went well for me. I had an amazing time. I thought she was awesome. She was super mentally healthy and intelligent, but she kept asking me all the questions. So uh, she got like my whole story. So she could have easily ruled me out for that reason. Cause right. you know, I never heard back. Who knows? <laughs> I mean, I'll be hitting her up in two weeks. But oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Just to find out if like, if like check back in potential. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. That's good. That's yeah. good. And actually one of the strategies I use on the dating sites is all the people that never answered me the first time I'll say something again. And I got three dates because I did that. So it's like, mm. you never know what's going on with someone else. You could have been overlooked. You could have been, it was maybe they were just getting out of a relationship. There's a lot of factors there, but repeat exposure to more potential people is always right. going to up your chances. That's a good, that's, that's, a, that's a good idea actually. Learned it in car sales. Yeah, maybe I should start doing that. It's, it, it's funny because I'm like, oh, they'd respond to me like 
screw them, you know, not even saying anything else, but like, if it's someone who like I I'm attracted to, like I might as well, you know, if it'd be worth it. Um, AJ, I did remember what I was going to say first time ever on the podcast. Wow. Um, so I saw a video online of some, some guy and a girl that are, that are at a restaurant and, uh, the guy wasn't paying for the girl. And I, I guess he might have, he must have had a bad experience. It was like towards the end of the day. It was like at the right at the end of the date. Like he, I didn't really tell the story. Um, and the, the guy like made sure to tell the waiter or waitress to bring over two checks. So two checks come over and he's like, all right, here's your check, you know? And, um, and this girl's like filming it. Like, are you really not making me, are you really making me pay? You're really not paying for me. And, um, Sounds like a keeper. Yeah. And it's funny because the first comments underneath that, the first comments always great to like, it's, it's always like against, usually it's always against like what the video has, you know? And it was a female saying like, man, y'all ho ass motherfuckers, like just going on dates to get free meals and stuff. Like you got to stop doing that. Like pay for your, learn to pay for yourself and stuff, you know? So, um, like for me, no matter what I'll, I'll, I'll always pay regardless, you know, that's just like, this is what I'm going to do. I don't want to, I don't want to have them pay, you know, it is what it is. It feels so, good. It's yeah. It's yeah. It does feel good. It shows like, oh, Hey, I can, like, I can afford it. It's fine. Like, it's not a big deal. Like I take care of it. Right. Um, but yeah, it's just like, it's just interesting seeing those different perspectives and, and how people look at it, you know, well, instead of just being like, Oh, there's, there's only once it's only like, Oh, well, the guy has to pay or versus the, it, girl, it's never that you know? he, it's never that he has to, but it's that he having the intention of wanting to do. Like if a woman was like, "Hey, listen, I I appreciate that. I really feel yeah. comfortable paying for my own food." Yeah, I'm like, "Hey, no problem. You know, that's fine." But well, females are doing this too, and I just talked to one who wasn't going out with me, but she had three dates the other night, the same night because she wanted dinner, and then she was putting food away for the next two days. So don't act like. Uh, men aren't being taken advantage of oh as my well. Gosh. So this is a two-sided problem and everyone is suffering because the communication intentions are shit. Right. And the better our integrity is and the better our communication and the better we feel about ourselves and our families and our careers, then we can actually sustain healthy relationships. Yeah, exactly. And hope that it's going to work out in the long run. Who knows? I personally consider three years or more like really successful. A lot yeah. of people think it has to be for life. I want it to be for life. That's how I am. But think of all the amazing things that you get to share over years, literally years of being intimate and spending so much time with somebody. It's unbelievable. Right. It's great. And I, I hope that I can do that too. And one day we both will. We both will be able to share those experiences with Unless someone. Unless we die. Yeah. <laughs> Just right let's hope not live live free or die hard <laughs> exactly um cool aj uh so i wanted to get like some final comments from you you know we had an awesome we had an awesome discussion here um and i know that like you and i are once again both extremely health conscious and and i and i feel like it can be tough for health conscious people to go on dates with people who just like, just live normally, you know, like they'll drink five times a week, eat whatever they want. And some of them look really healthy. They look great, you know? Um, but I do feel like if you are someone who like doesn't smoke weed, doesn't, uh, do drugs, who doesn't drink alcohol, who do, who's a vegan, you know, who, who like really vegan. limits their diet, who, like all these limitations and you could, and you, you could say like quote unquote restrictions. Um, it makes it harder to find a partner to, to even go on a date with somebody, you know? And then it's also like right yep. off the bat, you don't want to like say, Hey, I'm a vegan. They, I don't say that. I just like, I don't even tell them. I just like, right. I just order whatever I order, you know? And um, that, puts, that kind of proves the point of being ruled out superficially yeah right? exactly and i and i feel like even yesterday i rolled myself out because i said like i don't like drinking that much at all but not, i i did yesterday so right. but it was probably for the best yeah and like it's it, once again it's just good for the experience you know but um overall though aj would you say that like it is definitely it's harder or easier for a health conscious vegan you could say to date in 2022 
Okay. First, I just want to say health conscious and being healthy are two very different things. Yeah. If you're a healthy individual, your whole life is in front of you and you can perfect and master and work at things. Mm -hmm. Being health conscious is just putting those kind of limitations. And sometimes it's not actually done for health purposes, but for, you know, the ideals that you set up in your head. So I think that I said this on the episode with Jillian um, on her show, where we talked about dating as raw vegans, where yes, you're getting isolated, but you're also isolating yourself to others as well. So you have places like Woodstock Food Festival, you have places like restaurants that are completely plant-based vegan, you have fitness groups. And, you know, this podcast obviously draws a lot of eyes who are male and female to us and people will interact with and friends of theirs. And Mm -hmm. it's like ever expanding. So in 2022, if you are vegan, it's never been better ever because there's way more options, right? There's way more knowledge, right? There's way more opportunity. So there are people who care about health who are open to, maybe they're not even vegan, but they eat tons of vegan food because they feel better when they do it. So I think it's easier than ever. And, And here's the thing for a lot of people, the numbers, the law of average is important because they get one objection and they crumble. They say, yeah. Hey, listen, um, you know, you're losing, you're losing your hairlines weak. Uh, I'm not really into that. And then you lose your confidence and then it goes to shit. But if you were just like, Oh, okay, whatever. And mm-hmm. you go on to the next one, or maybe because you're not phased by it. Right. They, they actually are like, Oh shit. He's com-. like, they like the <laughs> confidence more than they fucking give a shit about that. Right. So what, what I'm getting at is eventually MP you going out with that woman and it not working out. That experience is important because eventually this muscle memory of handling objections and not getting crushed by simple little objections. You'll be like Neo in the matrix. You'll be like, <laughs> like dodging shit. And being like, Hey, right. listen, you have all these things you're putting on to me, but they don't fucking phase me. Right. This is what Doesn't I matter. want. And if you are in my world and in the things you're after the things that I want, then it's right. going to work out. Totally. Well said, AJ. Very but, well said. Thank you. I do yeah. want to add something. Get at it. I think that there's a lot of people missing a lot of opportunities because they don't do the bare minimum. Guys, if you're into girls and you're trying to date, at least try to pay for the date at least show you have some masculinity and some semblance that you want to protect and take care of your woman. Right. And it's not about buying love from her at all. It's just like you would do with the child or you would do with your parent when they're older. It's just like you take care of the people who you value and it shows that you value them. Because if I go out, if I'm not going to go ask someone out that I know I'm not interested in because I know I'm going to have to pay the money, right? Yeah, it's not. But it's if it's pointless. it's just a blind date, it's like, okay, yeah, like works out that way. Yeah. But do the bare minimum, pay for the meal, shower. You know, we live in this raw vegan world where a lot of, <laughs> people, a lot of people think showering is not necessary or hygiene, you know, brushing your teeth. Yeah, or it's healthy. your tongue or flossing or yeah. getting haircuts. Like no, no one's doing the bare minimum, you know, dress decently. Right. Have Look a nice. job. Have a, there's a show this is like a sitcom this guy is like real good looking he's real fit he uh he has all this stuff going for him he's got tons of friends and the woman's like going out on date and then she finds out he doesn't have a job and she's like oh, she walks away because it's like <laughs> it's an important thing you know have have some dreams have a career have charisma be able right. to communicate take control something we learn in sales is to take control because pe- if people don't respect you if they don't want to listen to you if they don't do the simple things that we're talking about doing how are you ever going to sustain a relationship if a woman doesn't Stop. respect you she's never going to want to be with you yeah but it's not You're about right. being a jerk it's not about being mean are you mean to children no but do they respect you yes yes right so we treat them well but we be firm in our beliefs because once we wane on our own beliefs they're going to walk all over us yeah and that's why i think that's why i think it's good to lay it down sometimes you know, and just tell it how it is. And be, I I think being open and honest is huge too. Like you don't want to, you don't want to like, uh, both, um, I mean, like it's good to see differently, but you want to, you both want to be on the same page essentially. Yeah. You know, it's definitely similar values. Yeah, for sure. Totally. So I think, I think you, I think being open and honest is, is huge, especially in the dating scene. Like you don't want to just get fucking, uh <laughs> ghosted like aj and i <laughs> keep getting hey, uh, hey. 
it, the law of averages teaches us that every time we get ghosted, we're that much closer to a really to not getting ghosted. awesome day. Right. You're right. You're right. You're totally right. And I was doubtful. All right. Last start of the month, I'm all excited. Car sales. I'm going up to so many customers and I'm striking out bankruptcies and all these things. Like they just don't qualify. Um, my head is down. Everyone's making sales. I'm like, why doesn't anyone love me? You know? <laughs> kind of like the dating world at first. So then I randomly get up to use the bathroom. I see someone out there. I'm like, oh, fuck it. I'll go up to them. They buy a yeah. car. Then no I sell way. four cars that week. And it's like, it just flips because right. it's all about being exposed. Imagine, you, huge. imagine there was like a rapid fire where 3 million women actually knew a lot about you. And they seen what you look like. They know your mannerisms. They know your goals. You could probably have like 18,000 soulmates that you, if you met one of them, you were, you would have said, this is the only one that would ever be this great. When in yeah. reality, there's a lot of potential out there for a lot of different things. So much. And you don't and have to experience it all. You just have to meet one of them. Right. And it's so good. funny. Yeah. It's so funny you say that because like, I'm definitely someone who like falls in love like so fast <laughs> and my friends like always make fun of me. Like it just like, like that, you know, it's like, yeah. come on, if he, you know? Um, and, uh, I don't know. It's like, I, that's just, that's just me. That's just how I, how I work. And then I'm like, Oh that's man. That's a great like, thing though. You know? Yeah, no, it's good. Um, and it's like, it's tough too. Cause like when you actually like somebody and then, and, and then like, they, they like ghost you or whatever, you know, it's like shit. And it, but you know what? It goes away and it's fine. <laughs> Everything's okay. And then you're back to, you're back to how it was before. So, um, but yeah, Hey, good things coming for us though, dude. It, it's, it's going to work out. AJ and I are man. both single. Do you guys think of the message there? But, <laughs> <laughs> but we're not desperate. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just no, chilling. But, uh, I want to, I want to touch on that because you falling in love easily. That's like someone who doesn't drink caffeine and they drink it and they kind of get jittery and they're like, I don't like this. So they didn't sleep that night. Yeah. You're sensitized to actual feelings in life. Right. And right. how many people run through 30, 40, 50, 80, 200 bodies and they never feel nothing for no one. Does that, right. it sounds cool to be able to pull ladies, mm -hmm. but if you don't feel shit, it sounds like you lost dude. Yeah. 100%. I've already experienced more love in like two weeks, not the two weeks here, but I'm saying in my life that most people won't ever have. Right. So yeah, it's a great I, thing to yeah. be sensitive to that. Totally. And like, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm like, oh my gosh, get on a knee. Like after the first date kind of guy, I'm just saying that like, I, I what? <laughs> I feel like I know what you're saying. Yeah. 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 I understand for the, for the people out there, you know, I'm just, I'm just explaining that I just like get, I'm like, oh, well, I can like actually really see myself being with this person, you know, and it like gets my emotions all fired up and gets me going, feeling good, you know, um, that's just kind of how I am. And like you said, like, it makes sense that guys, they tend to roll off women later, you know, over time, whereas yeah. women like us, like for me, right off the bat, I'm like, oh shit, like mm -hmm. this could be a thing, you know? So <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. I mean, genetically, from my understanding, we're kind of designed that way because it's all about being able to spread your genes, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if you're only into the same person forever, unless you luck out and things, it's it's kind of harder to spread your genes as much as possible compared to these like quote unquote celebrities and alphas who can fucking sleep with whoever they want, right? And have all the exposure they want. So mm -hmm. genetically, that's more of a gift because that means your genes get to live on. But yeah. we're we don't give a fuck if we have six hundred kids. We want the special one. We yeah, want right. the one where it's like, hey, let's walk through life together. Totally, I'm all for that. Can't wait. Me too. <laughs> cool. AJ, any uh, any final thoughts here today? The thing that I would recommend the most is to hold out definitely for women guys as well though just wait for something that's worth it before you make huge plunges into relationships that will have effects for the rest of your lives mm -hmm. don't run into having kids don't run into marriage when you're fucking 22 unless you both know kind of like how i feel i know because you can get yourself in a lot of trouble i have 
females coming to me, you know, because I talk to a lot of people and they just talk about the regrets they have because the person who they fell in love with the first six months wasn't the person that, you know, three years later, they're the same guy. Wow. You know, things, things shift. And if you're stuck with someone for life because of kids or things, it's really difficult. So, you know, really know for yourself, be patient with it and have some experiences, but that doesn't experiences and dates doesn't mean put yourself at risk of, you know, having kids early or sexual diseases or any of this stuff really go for me. I go for love. So find love, but, um, you know, don't limit yourself to never having experiences because people usually have one or the other. They're like, I'll sleep with anything that's breathing or I'm only waiting for the one, but they have to come to me while I'm in my room meditating because I'm manifesting it. <laughs> Be in between there, you know, exp- expose yourself to people, but don't, right. don't just fucking give it away so easily. Totally, AJ. Yeah, you can't raise you can't. your standards in life. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's definitely, I, I think as a female, you, you should be playing harder to get as a female, you know, you have more at risk. Yeah. Yeah. You have, you carry the baby. It's your yeah. stress on the body. It's, right. Who knows? There's tons of fathers that just leave out there. So, right. So you want to make sure that the guy is someone who you can trust and is also a genuine, nice, honest, loving, caring, giving person. And he's going to do anything for his family. And, Amen. and it can be, it can be hard to find. It really can be hard to find. And, uh, for all those out there who are having trouble, like I feel for you, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. And, um, it is tough. and while, while you could say that it's the easiest time in the world, I feel like as time goes on, it's going to keep getting easier and easier to date. It's also the hardest as well, because, um, there's just, there's so many options. There's so much out there. There's so much you can do, you know, and, uh, people are always double guessing, triple guessing, and you just never know. So, but, I, uh, I, I do believe that the, the person who, uh, is meant for you, you guys will click and you guys will have that feeling and both of you will know and, um, good stuff's going to happen. So great stuff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cool. Well, Hey guys, AJ. Hope you guys Anything enjoyed up? this one. This is yeah. a fucking fun topic. I yeah, like talking this. I think social dynamics is so interesting. If you uh-huh. found it interesting, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you think because we want to have more engagement with you all. Right. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, we definitely would love uh, to hear your thoughts. And um, because it, it helps us too. It helps us grow and it helps us learn and it helps us um, keep getting better. So uh, anyways, I hope that, uh, if you are in the dating scene in 2022, that, uh, you are having, uh, an enjoyable time and that, um, you are taking the experiences that you're, you're garnering or that you're gaining from all these dates or whatever you're doing and you're learning from them and you're bettering yourselves and you're bettering yourself in not only your dating life, but in your personal life too. Um, norm- I know that norm, sorry, sorry, no, go ahead it's normal to have that anxiety and feel awkward and nervous. And that's why the repeat exposure to get you more comfortable with being exactly. able to hold like, like, think about when we made this podcast, right. MP and I, but you guys never seen it, but before we have all these clips where I just can't start it. I yeah. So legit. <laughs> awkward. We have to restart. And now it's right. so easy. Yeah. Now it's, it's so just flowing like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, awesome. AJ, great stuff, dude. You uh, too, hundred people checking out here, your boy MP. Stay up, be great. Always keep it haunted, baby. Stay up, stay horny, and stay hungry. Yes, sir.